Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series to VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be trying out a team that reached rank number one on the ladder, featuring Faint, Mousehold, as well as Glamora. This team was built and piloted by a player called Santi, who won the very first Players' Cup and also was the Players' Cup 25th Invitational Champion. I actually fought against Santi for a YouTube video where he was using this team, and he completely crushed me. So, I saw that he had hit rank number one, made the team public, and I knew I had to try it out for the channel. This is one of the most consistent teams that I've tried out in the Series 2 format so far. You've got some really strong offense between things like Nasty Plot, Golden Go, as well as Dondozo, but you have a ton of bulk as well. And one of the coolest things about the team is that you can use Fane to break through opponents protects and focus sashes but you can also use faint onto your own glamora to set up toxic spikes through glamora's ability and toxic spikes in general is actually in a pretty solid place in vgc right now there aren't that many poison pokemon that people are going to use and so it's not that easy to just soak up the toxic spikes and in addition there are a lot of bulky pokemon that don't love getting poisoned like opposing dondozos for example as always i'll do a quick breakdown of the team but if you want to just skip to the battles check out the timestamps down below and thank you so much as always for watching if you enjoyed really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel it really helps out a ton anyway let's dive into things breaking down the team a little bit more in depth as always there's a rental and pace down in the description below if you want to try it out yourselves as well as santi's twitter the first combo i want to talk about of course is mousehold plus the glamora the general idea, like I mentioned, is that Mousehold can use Faint onto your own Glamora to activate Toxic Debris and put up the Toxic Spikes, which is really valuable in itself. Mousehold here is the Safety Goggles Friend Guard set, so it's really nice in enabling Glamora to survive for a little bit longer. Glamora, as you can see, her has a ton of defense and HP and special defense investment as well. And the general idea is that Grass Terra allows it to cover for a lot of the weaknesses, like its weakness to ground type attacks, for example. Mousehold here, by the way, has enough speed investment so that you're faster than max speed back Excalibur and Great Tusk, which is fairly valuable. Otherwise, you just got a ton of bulk. As you'll notice, there's no, you know, population bomb here. Super Fang instead is a little bit more consistent as it's just guaranteed guaranteed 50% uh, to your opponent's health, and Ghost Terra, really valuable in avoiding Fake Out, as well as not taking any damage from fighting type attacks, which is really valuable in a format with Great Tusk. So, the idea is that Mousehole plus Glamora can be really annoying for your opponent to deal with immediately, because you can just go for something like Protect plus Mortal Spin, you can go for Faint plus Power Gem into Bundle, that's actually how I lost against the team when I had gone up against it, because I just didn't expect Faint from Mousehold at all. You can also just combo with Mousehold pretty nicely, as the Mousehold is faster than Glamora, so you can just go for Super Fang into an attack, and often the combination of that will be able to just get a knockout. Glamora here has Mortal Spin, but it's still modest and has a good amount of special attack investment, so don't discount the amount of damage this Pokemon can do. With the Super Fang combos, you can often just pick up kind of knockouts with Super Fang plus a super effective attack from the Glamora. And I think Glamora just matches up really well offensively into a lot of Pokemon in the format. And so, yeah, there's a lot of setup that you can go for with this team, but if you're up against a team that doesn't have a great Dondozo matchup, right, often what I'll try to do is use Mousehold and Glamora to clear, like, what I think kind of beats Dondozo in the late game, and then once I've cleared those answers, then Dondozo and Tatsugiri can just sweep. Uh, you know, don't always just go for self faints onto the Glamora. Like, ask yourself whether or not you can actually get value out of Toxic Spikes, and be intentional about it, right? If you are setting up that Toxic Spikes, what Pokemon in the back are you setting it up for? What if your opponent doesn't bring that Pokemon? Do they have answers into, po like, Pokemon that basically don't, you know, take the poison from Toxic Spikes? Do they have poison Pokemon in, in general as well? That's something to ask, but Mouse Glamora is a really good lead for this team. You also have Dondozo and Tatsugiri here. Now, this Dondozo does not have much attack investment, it's very speedy as you can see, and it's also got a ton of special defense investment. It's a set with Rest and Lumberry. And so Lum is pretty nice, uh, because it also covers for just opposing like Will-O-Wisps, for, for example, as well as being able to, you know, wake up from opposing Spores. And the general idea here is that instead of Leftovers, you've got Rest, because the Dondozo can just soak up a ton of damage, Rest all the way back up, heal up, protect, and slowly Toxic Stall your opponent. Um, and the thing is, even after you your Lumberry has been consumed, like, Rest is still really strong, right? Because sometimes you'll be up against opponents that just don't have consistent damage in a Dondozo, and they try to slowly chip away at you, but then you just heal all the way back up, and then you wake up after a couple turns, and then just keep resting, and with the Toxic kind of, you know, poisoning on their side, it's really difficult for them to break through, and so, yeah, this set is a little bit different, right? Steel Terra is also mainly here defensively uh, to give you some better coverage, especially into Grass-type attacks, otherwise things like Brute Bonnet can be pretty annoying, and so, yeah, it gives you some good coverage there. 
Tatsugiri here is just a choice scarf variant, but you actually do have a good amount of defense investment as well instead of just being max special attack, max speed. It's the classic choice scarf set, and it's got Dragon Pulse, which is pretty consistent as a means of kind of finishing games off because sometimes if you're not using Dragon Pulse and you have like Sleep Talk instead, all of your moves can miss, and that's always really stressful with a Pokemon like Tatsugiri. To round things out, you've got Golden Go. This is a nasty plot set with leftovers, which is something that's been a little bit more popular recently. Golden Go plus Mousehold is one of the best leads that you can go for with this team as well if your opponent doesn't have great damage to like get a one-hit knockout onto either immediately. Because you can simply just go for something like follow me into a nasty plot, then go for like Super Fang and to make it rain, you know, steal terror and just kind of clean the field. Uh, with leftovers as well, um, you can heal back pretty quickly, actually, especially thanks to Mousehold, you know, being able to redirect attacks away, and you have protect on so many Pokemon on this team as well and so yeah there are a lot of teams that i think just don't adequately have answers into mouse plus golden go Roaring Moon is the final Pokemon here. This is a booster energy set, and it's optimized to let you always get the speed boost from booster energy. And the idea is that this just makes Roaring Moon a pretty potent Tailwind user. Uh, Tailwind can be really valuable. One mode you can go for with this team is Roaring Moon plus Glamora lead or Roaring Moon plus Golden Go. And then, for example, Dondozo Tatsu in the back. You also could go like Roaring Moon, Golden Go, Glamora, and then one of these three as the final one, for example. But yeah, this offers you Tailwind Pressure. Acrobatics is really nice into Grass-type Pokemon like Brubonnet and Amoongus, for example. Earthquake is just really strong in this format across the board. And the general idea is that like, this gives you a slightly more fast-paced and offensive mode, right? With Roaring Moon and Golden Go and Glamora, you can actually just deal a lot of damage without relying on slowly poisoning your opponent and then waiting from there. But one of the main modes with this team is Mouse Glamora. You know, either set up your own Toxic Spikes or Mortal Spin to poison your opponent and then chip away at them. Get Dondozo and Tatsu in a place where they can't do much into you and and then slowly let the poison just knock out everything from their side of the field. So yeah, it's definitely a, I think, trending way to utilize Dondozo. And it's a combo that I've actually struggled against a good amount while, you know, playing on ladder and also practicing for regionals as well. So yeah, anyway, that's it for a quick breakdown. Let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. So for weaknesses, one of the first things I want to point out is that with Mousehold and Glamora, sometimes you might get tempted to like just spread poison, but you can actually get punished really heavily as a result. For example, Mouse and Glamora can be a little bit passive, especially if your opponent has like a good Steel type Pokemon, right? O opposing Golden Goes scare me a good amount. Glamora obviously has Earth Power for it, but you can't Super Fang into Golden Go, and so yeah, like a nasty plot Golden Go with redirection on the opposing side can be pretty scary because it's not like we can really get much value out of Poison. Uh, obviously, opposing Poison type Pokemon in general can be scary because they can soak up Toxic Spikes, and Pokemon that aren't grounded just won't get hit by the Toxic Spikes when they come into the field, right? So Steel type Pokemon, Poison type Pokemon, Pokemon that aren't grounded, those can all be pretty tricky uh, for the Poison stuff. And the other thing you really want to be careful about is I've had games where I'm like, oh, Mouse Glamora, I feel like I can just lead that all the time, but then my opponents lead with like super super strong offense right and pressure both pokemon with knockouts immediately and i can't retaliate back with the ko and suddenly things get a lot trickier so that's one thing to watch out for i think one thing you can take advantage of with this team is baiting out the terra early from glamora grass terra is obviously really good in reducing the super effectiveness of attacks like uh, ground type attacks but then it opens a whole new suite of weaknesses right ice and fire and flying for example and so sometimes you can leverage that to your advantage and if you can bait glamora to terra early um um, it makes it a lot trickier for it in the end game. So that's one thing to watch out for. Uh, another thing, I think one other thing to note is that this team generally lacks the ability to get like huge one hit knockouts immediately, uh, unless like you're super weak to a specific Pokemon. And so think about how you can potentially use that to your advantage. Naturally, with Dondozo and Tatsugiri, you know, the, the classic answers uh, against it uh, still kind of hold true. One thing to note though is that this is, of course, the rest set, right? And so. Uh, rest in general can be a little bit more annoying because it's not like you can just chip away at this Pokemon slowly, right? It will be able to heal all the way back up. So you do want to be really careful about that. Uh, against this Dondozo set, I mean, I think this is where just having like super effective damage can be really valuable, especially if you bait out Terra early from another Pokemon. Like Brute Bonnet with Bullet Seed, for example, can be really valuable into a set like this. Um, Encore, Freeze Dry, uh, Iron Bundle, I think can also be really valuable. That's one of my favorite sets in the format right now. So that can give this uh, in particular some trouble. And I think with Mousehold, this Mousehold obviously is rather defensive and it has ghost terra so it's not really you know that easy to just knock it out immediately but yeah keep in mind that like, this is the move set right and with like super fang and faint like ghost type pokemon in general can a uh, wallet or a ghost terra for example uh because yeah you just can't go for super fang or faint onto those and so golden gold like i mentioned earlier can be a little bit tricky if you have redirection and like nasty plot for example and so i think like pokemon selection wise with this team if your opponent kind of like brings the wrong pokemon it can put them in a pretty big hole as well 
But if you bring the wrong Pokemon, it can also put you in a bad spot. Like, I had a game where I led Mouse Glamora, and it was just way too passive into my opponent's team, and they swept me in, like, three turns, right? Because I just, like, didn't have the damage to kind of keep up with them, and they had their Dondozo answers kind of in the end game. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for a highlight of some weaknesses. Let's get into the games. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I posted a video uh, recently that featured a bunch of my opponent's team. Now, that team had a Grumpig on it, and it also had a Iron Treads on it. But the rest of the team had Screamtail, Braviary, Tauros, Fluttermane. Here, my opponent has... Tauros, so three of the six same Pokemon, but then there is a Medicham, a Kilowattro, and a Forges. Oh boy, I really don't know what to expect, honestly, but I'm down for a Glamora Mouse lead with Dondozo Tatsu in the back, I think. Golden Ghoul's no not bad here. Roaring Moon Acro is also okay, but... I'm down for Mouse plus um, Glamora. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know what to expect here from, like, Medicham or Florges. I, I did play a Florges the other day that had, like, its self-activated weakness policy onto a Great Tusk and then gave it Choice Scarf as well through its ability, which I thought was really interesting. But then my opponent just kept Earthquaking themselves and, like, essentially they KO'd everything around them and I just went Grass Terror Glamora with Mouse Hold and... A plus two ground terror earthquake did less than 50% to Glamora. So, yeah. <laughs> Either way, let's see. Really cool team. Okay, it's going to be Treads plus Florges. Well, Treads is actually kind of annoying because I can't poison you. It's going to be Booster. Hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking like Earth Power into you. I'm sorry, Grass Terra. Earth Power. Super Fang. Try to get that out of the way. What, what, what is going to happen here, honestly? It's my main question. I don't know. <laughs> also, one of my favorite things about now the camera, like, not being stuck after you make your moves is getting to see some of the Pokemon animations. Like... Mousehold is one of, easily one of my favorite Pokemon from this gen, and it's just so cute, like, seeing it huddled up. So yeah, like, what's interesting here is I can't just go for, like, the poison stuff immediately, right? Because, like, I can't actually poison Treads, but if I can get a knockout onto it with this combo on turn one, that's already really good. Ideally, Treads, I don't know, goes for, like, an Earthquake or just a physical attack onto Glamora so that I get a layer of Toxic Spikes up. I think that'd be super ideal. They're going for a Terra, but they're slower. Oh. It's Florges Terra, that makes sense. Steel Terra Florges. Okay, well, I can't poison you either. Sad. Okay. So Mouse outspeeds the treads. Get my Super Fang off. And they just Iron Head into Mouse Hole. Okay. Uh, not a bad turn one trade, in my opinion. Let's see if Mouse survives the turn. It's not going to. That's fine. It means I can't self faint. But you know what's cool? I can bring out Dondozo before Tatsugiri and actually just Earthquake to set up Toxic Spikes. I don't know if that's really necessary at this point in the battle, though, honestly. Depends on what they bring in. Medicham has hit the field. Okay. I mean, Medicham can skill swap, which is interesting. I think right now, it's like the obvious play would be for me to switch Glamora into Tatsugiri. I kind of want to just Sludge Bomb into Medicham here, honestly, and then protect on Dozo, and then the next turn, switch Glamora out into Tatsu and then Earthquake. Let's protect. Psycho Cut? Okay. Well, that will set up some Toxic Spikes. I get my Sludge Bomb off. So much damage. Ooh! You've got Charm! 
You've got charm. Okay. Seeing that, I actually think I'm down to just straight up earth power here. Hmm, let's actually think this through. Charm, Moonblast, Steel Terra Forges. That's fascinating. It's very fascinating. You know, the thing though is because I set up that Toxic Spikes, like I think I'm still down to switch in Tatsugiri and just go for an Earthquake anyway. Like, yeah, you have Charm, but essentially what I can do is use the Poison to take away at whatever is coming in. Unless it's Kilowattrol. But if it's anything other than Kilowattro, essentially, like, yes, Dondozo's not going to do much damage because you have Charm, but you're also not doing that much to me, and I can just rest up uh, pretty consistently as well. So I'm down to just send it here. The floor just set is fascinating. I mean, the, the whole team is fascinating, right? Like, Booster Energy, Tread, Psycho Cut, Metacham, Charm Floor just with Steel Terra and Moonblast. Okay. We got Earthquake, nice. That's so much in a floor gist. Yeah, like even if you charm me now, I think it's a little too late, quite frankly. Yeah. Let's see what ends up coming out. Leftovers as well. Okay. Charm, Moonblast, Leftovers, Steel Terra. It's really cool. Tauros is their last one. Okay, perfect. So the poison here is a really big deal. Yeah, like, th this is kind of what this team likes, right? It's like, yeah, I ate up the charm, but still, it's not that bad, because you shouldn't really do that much into me. This thing does have leftovers. I'm honestly happy just clicking Wave Crash into it, I think. Yeah. Because Tauros really doesn't do that much into me. I don't know if Wave Crash gets the knockout, though, is the thing. Oh, they actually end up forfeiting. Okay. Yeah, it was a cool team on my opponent. I think the tough thing is just, like, what are their Dondozo answers, really? Charm was kind of their best bet, and... Yeah, like, I, I think they just kind of struggled to trade in terms of damage positively against the team that we had here. And Mouse being able to just get that Super Fang off and move before my opponent, and then being able to Earth Power to finish things off with Glamora is really nice. So, I think that's one of the strongest things about Mouse Hole plus Glamora. There's a lot of flexibility with what you can do. You can Grass Terra turn 1, you can go for Mortal Spin to slowly poison your opponent, you can go for Self Faint to set up Toxic Spikes, you can protect the Mouse while Glamora, like, puts on some pressure. Uh, Glamora also does pretty significant damage. You can go for Faint plus an attack and just try to get a knockout onto your opponent's side. So, yeah. The reality is that it often sets up the early game really well to the point where Dondozo and Tatsugiri can just wall your opponent opponent in the end game and so yeah like my opponent ended up forfeiting a little bit earlier but i just think there was nothing they could have really done against londozo at that point especially once we got that layer of toxic spice uh up thanks to the metacham uh, with Tauros coming out it's like Tauros would just slowly faint and even if you infinitely charm me like the Tauros will just eventually get knocked out right and once Tauros goes down i'm waiting for the free switch into glamora to just earth power into the floor just uh, steel terra slot so yeah Our next game, we've got two fire types in Volcarona and Talonflame, a Baxcalibur, Golden Go, Grimmsnarl, and Bundle. So. Steel Terra, Nasty Plot, Golden Go is going to be weak to a lot from the opposing side still. Make it rains decently strong here though, but I don't know. I really like leading Mouse Hulk Lamora with this team with Dondozo Tatsu in the back. I think, like, you very much can make a strong consideration for Roaring Moon here with Acrobatics, but the Roaring Moon is really weak into Baxcalibur, which I don't love. And Golden Go, if it's AV, uh, Ground Terra Baxcalibur, it, Golden Go's... It's interesting. I think if Golden Go were, like, Water Terra, it'd have a lot more value in this one. And that is something that has popped up, Leftovers, uh, Water Terra, Golden Go instead of Steel, but Steel obviously gives you the extra burst and damage that you're often looking for. But I think the the nice thing about Mouse plus the Glamora here is that with the Salt Vest and Grass Terra, it's going to be kind of difficult for my opponent to knock me out early. One thing we do have to be very intentional about is the Terra on Glamora, because if I end up going for Grass Terra, it might save me against an Earthquake from Baxcalibur or a Make It Rain from Golden Go, but then it opens a whole new door of weaknesses. I become weak to Freeze Drive from Bundle, Flare Blitz from Talonflame, or Brave Bird from Talonflame, Baxcalibur's Ice-type attacks, and Volcarona's Fire-type attacks. So, have to be very smart about how to utilize the Terra on Glamora here, if I want to do that, in my opinion. But this looks like a game where Dondozo Tatsu can very easily stall things out after getting some poison up on the field. I think, though, 
like if I were to think about like big picture wise, uh, Nasty Plot Golden Girl is honestly decent in this matchup. I just didn't love it because I saw the Volcarona in team preview, but they're gonna go with Bax plus Golden Go. Okay. Well, this is a pretty interesting lead because they obviously pressure make it rain with Golden Go immediately. How important is Steel Terra on my Dondozo? Uh, I don't think it's actually that important. I'm actually pretty interested in going for Faint here immediately to guarantee Toxic Spikes. Faint onto Glamora and actually just Earth Power immediately into Golden Go. Alright, they're gonna go for a Terra. I don't know. I like, could actually just lose both Mons here, but it is gonna be Bax Terraing, okay? Into ground, sure. Which makes it now weak to Dondozo. Good protect from Golden Go. The thing, though, is I actually don't think that's too bad for me. Like, they probably are just gonna go for Earthquake here to knock out the, um... Glamora, but that's honestly fine because I think Dondozo is actually already- Oh, and they actually went for Ice Icicle Crash expecting a uh, Grass Terra. That's super interesting. I just got two layers of Toxic Spikes up immediately, right? Like, that's obviously super good. As we whiff Earth Power, but that's fine. Okay, so I, I think now, if you're my opponent- what do you consider? You could switch Golden Go out, and if you have Talonflame, Talonflame would be the perfect switch in, and then you just go for Earthquake, for example. I could consider Grass Terra Glamora here. I'm also thinking about Super Fang into Baxcalibur. Power gem into Golden Go. Yeah, Golden switches. Talonflame? Okay. Grass Terra there would have been huge for me. But given how low HP I already am, didn't really feel like that was uh, super worth it. And since we're actually faster than Bax, actually, yeah, this, this ends up working out totally fine. The downside is, like, these Toxic Spikes actually, like, won't have a huge impact right now. Um, since Golden Go also isn't going to get poisoned. But it's going to be really valuable into whatever my opponent's final Pokemon is, because whatever that is has to eat up the poison. And I think the reality is right now, Dondozo is super well positioned at this point. So I can switch Glamora, uh, sorry, uh, Tatsu, not Tatsu, Mouse Hold out into the, um, Tatsugiri now. Yeah, like, I don't think we really need to Terra here quite yet. Honestly, thinking about just Wave Crashing backs immediately, because I don't think that will be able to protect. But I think Earthquake's also decently fine here. I mean, Golden Go doesn't really threaten Dondozo very much right now, so... Yeah, I'm definitely happy to switch into Tatsu. I think the debate is, do I want to click Wave Crash? Do I want to click Earthquake? I don't expect Earthquake to actually knock out Baxcalibur. But I also think it's fine to not KO it here. Because I think it should be a 2-hit KO. So, I'm just going to Earthquake. Even if Golden Go protects, that's fine. And this Backscalibur, or sorry, this Dondozo doesn't have that much attack investment. It has very minimal, actually. So I'd expect um, Golden Go to be bulky enough. Especially given that it has Protect to survive a plus 2 EQ. But that's fine, right? The idea is to get both of them into KO range the next turn. Okay, neither Pokemon protects. Cool. We get Earthquake off. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, they're Nasty Plot. If you're Protect, it's almost always Nasty Plot these days. Glaive Rush, that's fine. Yeah, they're looking for a crit at this point. So we can just Earthquake again. 
I think the one the one thing I have to respect is what bundle being their last one and being Encored, but Encore doesn't matter. I have Lumberry, so you can't even freeze dry freeze me. I can steal Terra as well. I think this should be locked up. I will say my opponent did a great job of bringing Pokemon that were not really weak to the poison or like couldn't get affected by Toxic Spikes because Golden Glow and Talonflame are the only two members of their team that are like that. But the reason why I felt super confident once we got the two layers of spikes up is because they committed so many resources in the early game. I also managed to land that power gem into the Talonflame switch in as well, right? Which gave me a huge advantage. But I think realistically, they just didn't have too many good Dondozo answers here. So we should knock out the Baxcalibur. Whatever is coming in now is going to eat up, you know, um, the two layer Toxic Spike Poison, which is really good. So that's going to put it on a huge timer immediately. I still have Rest on the Dondozo. I still have my Terra as well. So all of that puts us into a really good spot. Turn 1 could have been pretty scary, though, because if they just went Protect and then just Earthquake immediately, that obviously would have been pretty bad. Um, my opponent was clearly reading me going for the Grass Terra, which I honestly think was a good read on their end. And Volcarone is the last one, so yeah, there's no Dondozo answer for them right now. We honestly didn't even really need the Poison, but the idea of getting the Poison up was if they didn't have Talonflame, right, in the back. Um, and it makes things just trickier for them, especially if they try to, like, bring out Grimmsnarl and set up screens, for example. So, with Lumberry here, I'm honestly happy to just click Earthquake. There's really not much they can do. Their best bet would have been, I don't know, going for a double protect and hoping for a crit from Volk, but I don't even know if like a crit Giga Drain would KO. I wouldn't expect it to, <laughs> given how much special defense investment we have. Yeah. Okay. And the poison ticks down ever so slowly here. They are leftovers as well, so they've got decent recovery, but obviously the poison will out-recover them, and then Wave Crash will just finish them off as well. So we'll just click wave fresh now. I think what was interesting about this game was like Baxcalibur's is actually kind of scary to go up against, but if we are able to force the ground terror out like we did in this one, it makes it a lot weaker into Dondozo. Although I guess I didn't end up wave crashing that slot with Dondozo anyway, which is kind of funny. But yeah, I think like with Mouse and Glamora both being faster than Baxcalibur, and then, like, getting that Super Fang into that Power Jam combo off, it made it really tough for my opponent. Like, eliminating Talonflame immediately, and then having... My opponent just, I don't think, had, like, super good Dondozo answers from the beginning of the game, and that's what this team does so well, right? Like, you're often using Dondozo to, like, clean up the game, but by that point, your opponent has already wasted a lot of their resources, and, like, it's really difficult to get to an end game where you, like, haven't eaten up a ton of poison across the board, but you still have your resources to deal with Dondozo. And, yeah, I just felt like... Even with the four that they brought in general, like Baxcalibur, Golden Goat, Talonflame, plus Volcarona, like, your best bet would be getting multiple Will-O-Wisps off onto the Dondozo, but then I can just rest it off anyway, so... I honestly think with the four that they brought, there was just no clear answer into Dondozo to begin with. Um, and so, yeah, like, that turn they nasty plotted, maybe they would have been better off going for a Shadow Ball and just hoping for a critical hit there immediately. That might, you know, give them a slightly bigger chance on that one. But yeah, once we got Dondozo out into Golden Go plus Bax, plus I had the Toxic Spikes up, plus Talonflame was eliminated, uh, I felt like we were in really, really good shape and that the only way we could lose was to some, like, multiple critical hits. So, yeah. Okay, we've got Garganacle, Sylveon, Amoongus, the Gyarados, Fluttermane, and Great Tusk. Uh, Garganacle is interesting. This might be a Golden Go game. I guess Make It Rain. I mean, Wide Guard from Garganacle is kind of scary. Hmm. So we have to obviously respect Sulk here. In my opinion, if we could eliminate Great Tusk, it really opens the door for us. Um, I haven't really brought Roaring Moon or Golden Go yet, so I'm thinking about those. Because I've gotten Mouse Hulk, Lamora, Tatsu, Dondozo in the first two matches. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta say I'm intrigued by like Roaring Moon, Golden Go, but it could also be Mouse, Golden Go. Glamora does have Earth Power here. And Power Gem, but it, my opponent's team is a little bit more physically oriented. Grass Tower does give me an answer into Amoongus, though. I just think the debate is, do I even bring Dondozo Tatsu in this one? It's decent into some of their team. Especially with Rest. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go Dondozo Tatsu. And the reason for that is because I think Golden Go is one of the best Pokemon in this matchup. And so if you're in my opponent's position, what is their response into Golden Go? Well, Great Tusk is one of their best answers into it. But Great Tusk doesn't really do that well into Dondozo plus Tatsu, so we can leverage that to our advantage. I also don't think back Glamora and Mousehold feel that strong into this team specifically. Sylveon plus the... I mean, this is amazing for Golden Go, right? Uh, then it's pretty easy to Tailwind plus make it rain. The main thing is that's super duper obvious. I honestly wonder if this is Focus Ash Trick Room on the Flutter. Uh, I, I am actually really worried about Trick Room here, quite frankly. Fire, Terra, Sylveon, Terra, Blast, Golden Goal also could be a thing right now. I don't love double protecting here because in the off chance they are Trick Room, it really stings, but I really want to bait out their Terra here and see which one is going to go for Terra because it could be Steel Terra on Flutter Main or Fire Terra Sylveon. Yeah. Uh, getting Fire Terra out from Sylveon though is really valuable because I have Dondozo in the back, right? So now you're weak to Earthquake and Wave Crash. And I didn't want to just, you know, send it, go Tailwind, make it rain Steel Terra and just like faint to. Uh, okay, they end up protecting, cool. Uh, that's pretty huge. Like, now I know that you're not Focus Ash on the, um, Flutter. Yep, it's Terra Blast. That's exactly why I wanted to make that play. Cool. Uh, I think now I want... Oh, I do have Earthquake. Hmm. I don't think that's the right play, though. I think Flying Terra, Acrobatics here into Sylveon and Make It Rain feels really good. I feel like if you had Trick Room on turn one, they would have just gone for it, right? I also don't know the item on the Flutter. We didn't see a boost energy, did we? I will say that's one thing that I realized, like, when you're playing in this format, it's important to pay attention to. Uh, even when I was, like, competing at regionals, there were, like, there was definitely one game where I just, like, saw booster energy on the team sheet, but then didn't pay attention when that Pokemon came out and missed what the boost was. <laughs> so, pay attention to that. Side note. Okay, we have our Flying Terra, Roaring Moon now, out and about. No Protects, great. There's Acro into Sylveon. Ooh, I hope it makes it rain actually KOs. I'm not sure it does. Moonblast is less than half though, which is good. I could have gone Shadow Ball there, but I really thought the combo would KO. Wow, doesn't knock out either, okay. That's fine, Earthquake finishes off both. Good Hyper Voice, though. I don't think Quick Attack KOs, though, into Roaring Moons. So I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Yeah, I'm happy to just EQ here. Could be just Acro Shadow Ball, no? Why not that, actually? Because they could switch in Gyarados right now. That's probably better, right? I don't know. I think Sylveon protecting here is also obvious. So I think it was actually an opportunity to consider Nasty plotting with Golden Go. But I don't want to risk eating up a Terra Blast. I also thought about Earthquake Nasty Plot. Like, I would do a lot of damage to myself, but then I can Tailwind make it rain the next turn, which feels really strong. Let Sylveon switches. Yep. Got it. What is that? Gyarados? Amoongus. Okay. Uh... Oh man, if I switched up the ordering of that, that would have been sick, but that's obviously a pretty tough play to make. Mmm... So, I haven't revealed Earthquake yet, right? And as a result, my opponent probably thinks they can safely go for Rage Powder right now to get away around from that. So, I think here I'm down to Earthquake and Protect. 
Uh, it's a little greedy to nasty plot here, but I don't know. It's it's really interesting to me as an option. It's just like, is it worth taking that much damage on Golden Go? If I don't faint, I actually think the answer is yes, it is worth it, because I can just Tailwind make it rain the next turn. Okay, I'm going to go Earthquake Nasty Plot here. Because it's like, all I need is Golden Go to have 1 HP, because then if I set up Tailwind, um, Tailwind Make It Rain kind of clears everything. I guess they could have Quick Attack with Sylveon. Amoongus is actually the one switching, okay. Nice. Double KO, plus I get Nasty Plot off. Beautiful. That's one of the things that's really interesting about having Earthquake on a team, by the way. Like, don't necessarily be afraid to Earthquake your side of the field. Especially because now I think I gain a huge advantage, right? So, just, like, recapping the board position. We both have used our Terra. That's fine. I have a really fast Roaring Moon right now with the potential to go for the, um... The Tailwind as well. Right? Also, sorry, I, I don't know if I said I had an Attack Boost earlier. This is Speed Booster Bundle, uh, Roaring Moon. Um, obviously. So, now I can just click Tailwind plus Make It Rain. It's plus one Make It Rain. I could also just double protect, scout out for what they want to do. Garganacle's their last one. Okay. Uh, obviously I have to worry about Wide Guard from that Pokemon. I'm actually thinking about Nasty Plotting with Golden Go again right now. They've already terra so Dondozo should clear clear Garganacle. Um, actually, I think Protect Make It Rain is fine. It, because essentially, like, they're more or less forced to click Wide Guard right now, but if you click Wide Guard, that means you can't click anything else with your Garganacle, and Amoongus doesn't do anything into Golden Goal right now. Yeah, so it essentially just keeps forcing them to Wide Guard, right? That's fine. Because the thing is, they can't touch Golden Goal with the Moongus. Like, Golden Goal is really well positioned against both of these right now. And the reason you might be wondering why in the world would you bother even clicking the uh, Make Your Rain there is because it punishes them in if they actually don't click Wide Guard, right? And that's certainly a possibility. I'm going to just click Acrobatics now. And, uh... I think I'm okay going for Nasty Plot, although I'm honestly tempted to click Make It Rain again here, because I could see them, like, protecting Amoongus and attacking with Garganacle. Yeah. These are the mind games that sometimes happens, right? But it's kind of like a I know you know kind of situation. And it's like, okay, even if they click Wide Guard there again, what is Amoongus going to do? Yeah, it gets maybe Spore off onto the Roaring Moon slot, but then I just Shadow Ball Amoongus. KO that eventually. Um, part of what helped here is having leftovers on Golden Go as well, so, yeah. This lead can be really strong, depending on the matchup, and I feel like this was kind of the perfect matchup for it. The main thing was, like, not getting demolished by Sylveon on turn 1 of the battle, right, which is why I double protected. Like, as soon as I find out that you're Fire Terra, that already gives me a pretty huge advantage. Uh, things got a little bit scary, because turn 2, both of their Pokemon survived, which I honestly wasn't expecting, but, yeah, this Golden Go is 84 special attack, instead of, like, max special attack. Which is pretty standard, I just feel like I haven't used Golden Go personally that much in Series 2, and in Series 1 I was used to having, like, max special attack back in the very beginning of the format. And so as a result, yeah, like, if we had max special attack there, that actually might have just been double knockout onto the Sylveon and the Flutter. But the reality is that we had really good speed control here with Roaring Moon, thanks to the speed boost from the uh, booster energy plus the Tailwind pressure. Golden Go generally matched up well into my opponent's team. I was actually pretty scared about Gyarados and Tusk, and neither of those made an appearance in the end, which I thought was interesting. But I'm really happy to feature the Roaring Moon Golden Go component of this team, because they're both really powerful. Uh, Golden Go also pairs really nicely with Mouse Hold as a lead. That's something else to consider. But yeah, let's keep things going. Alright, we've got Hands, Bundle, Tusk, Golden Go, Gothitel, and Jugulus, which is the team that Wolf Glick and Marcus Stadter developed together. Marcus won a regionals over in Europe with this team, and Wolf got top 8 at Knoxville regionals with this team. I think I actually may have ran into this player while practicing with this team earlier, and they ended up defeating me off the backs of... I forgot what they lead... I think they they had, yeah, it was Hands, Goth, Golden Go, and I think it was Bundle, maybe? 
And Grass Terra on the hands gave me some issues. And I think it was hands plus Golden Go as the lead. Uh, so against hands, Golden Go lead, what do I want to do? Because the Gothito is Charm here, which is also really scary. Hands, Golden Go. I think this could be a Golden Go Mouse kind of game. The, the question is whether or not I should go Dondozo Tatsu in the back. Glamora is also pretty interesting. I'm going to try this for the first time because I've when I played with this team, I've almost always just gotten Dondozo Tatsu in the back. And I think it's totally acceptable in this one. But if we bait out Grass Terra from Iron Hands, then Roaring Moon can Acrobatics it, which is really nice. I think Roaring Moon in general is pretty sweet into this matchup. Maybe Golden Go Goth, okay. I'd say my Golden Go is incredibly well positioned right now. Especially with leftovers. Uh, I'm very happy just clicking Nasty Plot turn 1 and protecting with Mouse, I think. Even with Spec Shadow Ball from their Golden Go, it's not the end of the world. Like, the debate is whether or not I should actually consider tearing uh, the Golden Go here. But if I Terra, I can't switch, which is kind of scary. I do think they might actually just click Shadow Ball here, so I'm very intrigued by just clicking Follow Me. But I'm going to settle for Protect. Okay, no Terra from their end. Got the protects. Okay, it's fine. I think if Make It Rain comes out on turn one, we are in incredibly good shape. But even if it's Shadow Ball with Friend Guard, I would expect to survive. They went for the Choice Specs trick onto Mouse. Wow, that's going to put them in a really tough spot, I think. It's actually, I'm, I'm thinking about, because, like, they're locked into Trick now, so I'm actually thinking about, uh, I can't switch Mouse out. I think Shadow Ball into Golden Go plus Super Fang is really safe. You might be wondering, why in the world would you Super Fang? It's because Golden Go could consider uh, going for a Terra here to kind of survive the turn. And we have a faster Golden Go here as well. So, I'm down for this because it essentially guarantees a knockout onto that slot. Got switches, which is fine. Yeah, into hands. That's fine. Yeah, they didn't go for Terra, but that's fine. Now I just get plus two Shadow Ball off. Nice. Okay, that's cleared. Uh, I think this really boils down to what their last one is. If they did not bring Tusk, I think Golden Go is already just in insanely good shape. And it's Bundle. Yeah, Golden Go is super well positioned right now. Um, so this is Sash Bundle. Hands is Fake Out Pressure. The main thing is to not get Encore into Bundle right now. Yeah, because it does have Encore on the opposing side. <clears throat> I just clicked Shadow Ball. If they Encore me now, it's fine. Encoring me into Super Fang, also honestly fine. What do I want to do right now? I'm honestly happy just going Super Fang Shadow Ball right now. Oh, they went Freeze Dry. Okay, that works. Nice. So I get Super Fang. I don't know if plus two Shadow Ball gets the knockout is the only downside. With uh, it being AV hands, I actually expect it to survive, yeah. And they end up drain punching. So they will heal back a little bit, but it's fine. It's been a really fast-paced game, but I think the reality is Golden Go kind of cleans up this entire game. Okay. Uh, with that... I think it's fine to go into Roaring Moon here. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think what we do is we go into Roaring Moon. I think it, it, very realistically at this point, there's no damage into the Golden Go, right? The only real response to the Golden Go on the opposing side was their Golden Go. So by bringing out Roaring Moon, I get the speed boost. I'm not sure Shadow Ball KOs, but it's fine because what I can do here is just protect my Roaring Moon and then just Shadow Ball into the Iron Hand slot. And Iron Hands is Assault Vest, and there's Gothitelle is the only switch in. So if we knock out the Iron Hands, that, then there's just no damage left into the um, the Golden Go. And yeah, they protect with Bundle, but I have no incentive to target that because I know you don't have Hydro Pump. There's Shadow Ball onto the Hands once again, and that's a KO. Yeah, this was just Golden Go getting one Nasty Plot off and basically being able to fully sweep. And that's why Mouse plus Golden Go is such an oppressive duo as well. When I had played against this opponent on the ladder previously, they had defeated me, and I, I was trying to do stuff with Glamora, and, it, like, Glamora was just not good, and I, like, double switched into Dondozo, so I, I took a completely different approach in this one. So, Bundle just protected. This got to tell is Psychic, Trick Room, Charm, Protect, so there's no Fake Out either. We still haven't really even Terra'd yet. Um... Yeah, I'm fine just clicking Make It Rain and then Acrobatics here into Bundle. Yeah, Gothitelle protects. Their best bet is, I guess, a freeze at this point. We still haven't Terra'd yet either, but there hasn't really been a huge need to yet. They end up Encoring into us. Yeah. I think the core of, like, Bundle Goth Hands just really can't do that much into Golden Goal. Their Golden Goal would have been the best bet. That's why on Tur 1, I actually thought it would have been interesting for them to just straight up click Shadow Ball anyway to get a huge amount of, like, burst damage off. But obviously, that's really risky in front of a mouse hold. I was expecting them to click Make It Rain, but Trick put them into an even trickier spot, no pun intended. And then, like, a Super Fang from uh, Mouse Hold is just such a good attack on this team as well. So we can just Shadow Ball and Acro now into the Gothitelle. And essentially, like, we made Gold Golden Go really strong in this game, and also we made their Gothitelle basically be completely useless, right? I think, like, Golden Go is one of the scariest Pokemon for Gothitelle to go up against because you can't trap it in, and you can't really do anything into it either. And so, if you're if you're bringing Gothitelle into the matchup, it's like you have to be very intentional. And it makes sense why my opponent brought it. Uh, the Gothitelle on the opposing side is Charm, and that's kind of the Dondozo answer, right? And so... I was basically like, I think you're kind of forced to bring Gothitelle into the matchup. I'm actually just straight up not going to bring Dondozo uh, at all. And then, yeah, Roaring Moon in this endgame was kind of nice for just pressure onto my opponent's side of the field as well. Especially for, like, a potential late game Tailwind. Didn't feel the need to really set it up there, but the reality is that with the four Pokemon they brought, and after turn one, it was going to be really difficult for them to win, because there was just no damage output into Golden Goal whatsoever on my side, which I was able to leverage to my advantage. So, yeah. All right, we've had a nice win streak going on, and here we're going to go up against an opposing Glamora Dondozo team. So I'm definitely bringing Glamora here. I think being able to set up Toxic Spikes in general is really important. I honestly think this might be back to the basics with Mouse Glamora, because self-faint into getting Toxic Spikes immediately is really valuable in the Dondozo Mirror. I think the question is whether or not I bring Dondozo here, but the reality is I think the answer is yes, especially with Toxic Spikes in this matchup. Hmm. Golden Go is good against everything that's not the Dondozo component, but it also has to worry about ground-type attacks from Tusk. Roaring Moon's mainly for Tailwind, so yeah, I think we go Mouse Glamora. What becomes awkward here is if they end up being rest on Dondozo as well. If that's the case, then, like, the advantage would essentially be getting a knockout early on against my opponent's team, and then with the Dondozo rest versus rest set, like, they would just lose on timer. So that's one thing to consider. Um, if they're not rest and it's just leftovers, it is so much easier for us here. But this Dondozo set, I would say, has a fairly optimal matchup into opposing Dozos. So they go with Glamora and Tusk, okay. Hmm. This is interesting. This is very interesting, isn't it? Huh. Because, like, if I Grass Terra this, then they can Sludge Bomb me. I don't want to activate their Toxic Spikes, that's for sure. Man, the other question is, do we think Glamora here... What item do we think it, is, it has? Yeah, I went Protect Terra Earth Power because if they don't end up terroring and they're not Sash and I just one-shot them, it's 
really good for us. I guess what's interesting though is I didn't get like toxic spikes up immediately, right? So if I let's say a KO Glamora, you can just bring out Dondozo immediately. Okay, no Terra from their end. Mouse protects. Headlong rush, that's fine. That's very fine. You just set up toxic spikes onto your side of the field. Should survive a sludge bomb here thanks to friend guard, I would think. Unless there's specs. But we outspeed. Nice. Ooh, Glamora survives though. Uh oh. And they end up sludge bombing into the mouse slot. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I'd say that works out pretty well for us. Yeah, the main thing is making sure we don't get poison onto their side of the field. Or sorry, they don't get Toxic Spikes up. So, the Glamora moving first here was huge, but this Glamora has four speed EVs. So, it's either those four speed EVs legitimately makes the difference. <laughs> They're Assault Vest as well, given that they survived Earth Power. Um, I'm happy to just Super Fang... You know, honestly, I should survive close combat, right? So I actually want to faint to get my second layer of spikes up onto Glamora and then go for um, Earth Power again onto their Glamora. Yeah, because I don't think the Super Fang is actually that important against the um, Tosk. I think getting a second layer up is way more important right now. Okay, the close combat mouse, that's fine. Because the reality is, if they have Dondozo Tatsu in the back, this should put me into a really good spot. Right? Like, we're trading. The downside is I've used my Terra, but the upside is that I got two layers of Toxic Spikes up, and they didn't get a single layer up. And I get a free switch in into Dondozo right now. The big question is whether or not they're also rest on their Dozo. If they are rest... Ugh. I guess technically my opponent has the advantage with the way the timer looks right now. Man, maybe I should have thought about that. Like, if they are rest right now, I actually think it favors my opponent. Like, they should just switch Tusk out into Tatsu uh, currently. And I have committed my Terra, whereas they haven't. But let's just wave crash and switch in Tatsu. I might as well target Tusk here. I think the reality is that if they're not rest, this game is over. If they are rest, I actually think I lose unless they, like, threw away the Tusk. And they actually are staying in with Tusk here. Uh, that in itself is a big deal. Because that means even if you are rest, me getting this one wave crash off changes things dramatically. Because then it, it puts the timer into my favor. But that this is exactly why I wanted to prioritize getting those, you know, layers of Toxic Spikes up early. Okay, yeah, they stayed in with Tusk. That's wild to me, but I'll take it. Because it means now, uh, even if you are rest, I actually have the HP advantage, I think. Tusk will also faint if they switch out and back in after one turn of poison. Okay, they just close combat. That's fine. There's poison. Um, here I'm just happy to protect this turn. They should switch into Tatsugiri now, right? They didn't? What? Wow. Tusk is protecting then, surely, right? What's going on right now? Grass Terra? Well, that's what I was curious about. You have Terra Blast on that. Those are protects. Did they not bring Tatsugiri? Like, why would you not switch otherwise, right? They do have Grass Terra Blast, but I'm pretty sure that means you're not going to be rest here, right? Like, the odds of that feel really slim to me. Oh, it's leftovers. There we go. We confirmed it. Uh, that actually explains, by the way, why they're not switching to Tatsugiri. I think that's pretty smart. But we have rest, and Toxic now is really taking down on uh, Dondozo. So I actually think this turn I'm just going to click rest. Because I think this is when you finally switch into Tatsugiri. And if they don't, it's also fine. The poison is too hard for them to deal with at this point. Uh, they actually didn't make the switch, so nicely done.
But like Grass Terra Blast when you're I mean just really shouldn't do that much to us, right? We're at risk of getting crit right now is the only thing. But no crit, which is good there. Earthquake there would have been a, a lot stronger for me, honestly, but I was reading until a Tatsu switch in. Oh, that actually did a ton. Honestly, more than I anticipated. Uh, that's kind of scary. But poison is slowly ticking away. I'm going to protect here. This is actually pretty interesting. Like, Grass, Terra, Terra Blast, they switch out Dozo. Yeah, that's smart. Um, and they're doing this to essentially reset the timer, right? With um, the poison, which I think is absolutely the correct play for them to make right now. Tusk just close combats. Okay. Tatsugiri now is slowly going to faint from poison as well. But what's actually big here is I can't protect with Glamora. So I think if you're my opponent now, you should just switch Tusk back into the... Um, like, I'm going to click Earthquake here. I, yeah, I actually think, like, me kind of not Earthquaking earlier and trying to get fancy and predict the Tatsugiri switch in punished me heavily. They actually just Draco here. Ooh, okay, we survived. Nice. This is going to be a really close finish. Um, I think Tatsu faints after the next turn, right? Ah, if Tatsu just fainted there, we would have won the game immediately. What a fascinating game. Like, Grass Terra Terra Blast is actually pretty scary, but I, I don't think I played this properly. I, I feel like this should have been a 100% win after the early game, and the fact that it's even, like, close right now is a testament to my opponent's good play and me messing up slightly. Here's the upside, though, because they're Terra Blast Dozo, and we have Grass Terra Glamora, like, you can't KO me that easily. So here, this turn, I'm just going to protect with Don Dozo. Uh, Tatsugiri should faint from poison. Their Don Dozo should start taking away more poison. And then I can just go for rest the next turn and heal back up. But Grass Terra Blast is very interesting in the mirror match, right? That being said, like, this Dondozo really is on a timer now, but I didn't, like, do the best job of conserving my rest with the Chesto Berry specifically. I think we should be okay, though. So I'm going to click Rest now and just heal all the way back up. Obviously, their Terra Blast will do a pretty significant amount, but that's still fine. Like, we're just looking to buy turns right now, right? We'll see how much they do. If they do under half... I don't remember how much that first one did, if they, but if they do under half, I'll feel super good about my spot. Ooh, it is under half. Nice. Okay, huge. Yeah, I burn a turn of sleep here. Burn another turn of sleep. Poison is just taken away now. And that's exactly why I prioritized setting up two layers of Toxic Spikes earlier. So there's turn one. Should survive another one. Nice. If you're using Terror Blast, I, I actually forget which move they normally drop, because you want a combination of Order Up, Earthquake, Wave Crash. Yeah. I don't think they have enough time to KO everything now, especially since I have Grass, Terra, Glamour. A single Sludge Bomb will also knock out their um, Dozo. But if I had just Earthquaked earlier in the game, when we were up against that... Um, Tusk, then we would have just won immediately, because then the, the Dundozo doesn't get to reset the poison, right? But I think it's still fine here. Like, they're just... The, the damage is really ramping up now, and I still have two attackers, right? The Tatsu plus the Glamora. And I don't think they can actually one-shot Glamora right now anyway. 
I don't think we risk missing here, right? Because Earthquake should never KO Glamora. It honestly probably doesn't even KO Tatsu. And Drag Dragon Pulse is 100% accurate. And with the way Poison Damage is stacking up right now, I think this is just the best play. Yep. And they just Earthquake. Beautiful. But I have to say, this game was way closer than it needed to be, given the matchup. I feel like I should have won the game 100% after getting those double layers of Toxic Spikes up. But... Yeah, I mean, they ended up being Grass Terra, right? Uh, which meant that they could actually deal significant damage into our side of the field. But uh, the, the one turn I can really point, or the two turns I can point to is just like not KOing the Great Tusk a little bit earlier. I just kept expecting them to switch into Tatsugiri, but it makes sense for them not to um, at that point in the game anyway, since, yeah, you've got the, the unaware um, on both sides of the field, right? So, yeah. Um, but in the end, you could see, like, because they ended up being the leftover set and we had the rest set, I felt very confident with our ability to win with the toxic stuff. My only fear was if, like, they got to a point where, like, they were able to just knock out every... I, what I was really worried about was them conserving Great Tusk to the point where, like, yes, if you switch it out and bring it back in, it will faint to poison, but the Glamora didn't have Protect, which was what I was worried about, and I was worried that they would, like, time it perfectly so they can bring the Tusk back out and then close combat me for a KO, but I'm glad to feature kind of what another matchup against Dondozo looks like, because I think one of the huge things about this team is that it has a significant edge against the majority of Dondozo teams, given that you've got the Toxic Spikes, uh, Glamora Strat, and you've got the rest on Dondozo, um, and so, yeah. Uh, the, the one thing I was worried about was, like I mentioned earlier, them being rest as well, uh, and then, like, me taking a negative HP trade and then we just end up both resting consistently I think that would have gotten pretty ug ugly pretty quickly fortunately for us it was leftovers Grass Terra instead but Grass Terra Terra Blast definitely uh, a set that's popped up more recently and can also actually give a big edge in the Dondozo versus Dondozo matchup so yeah anyway that's gonna be it for this one so yeah I got wrecked by this team and now hopefully you can see just how strong it is uh, all the different modes you know not just the mouse hole plus the glamora combination and I'm glad we got to feature some good games in with the golden go and roaring moon as well but it's one of the most consistent teams I've tried out so far in the format and so yeah if you're looking for something to climb with that is really really powerful this is definitely one of the teams I'd recommend so thanks for watching leave a like if you enjoy and I'll see you all next time all right peace <laughs>